Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And today's topic is Ascension to Fifth Dimension. Many people contact me, they ask me questions, or they want to reach fifth dimensional consciousness. They have heard about this. Of they've read about it, they've studied about it, there's an attraction to it. And the belief system in general, for general public, is that reaching a higher level of consciousness, fifth dimension, or beyond, or awakening, or it ha it's associated with a utopian type of life. So, and it's also in pseudo spirituality uh, that today is being practiced. And many, many people, I would say a large number of spiritual seekers are very attracted to it. Is there is this theme that the humanity, the planet Earth, humans, in this shift of consciousness, they would be transported to a utopian type of life and world. While this is possible, however, that is not the answer. The answer is not shifting into a utopian style of life because that's still within the world of duality. It's still an I thought, there's still somebody there wishing to create a world to their Im image, to their liking, that we're living in a, in a world that everything is according to the way we want it. And the way we want it is conditioned because your mind is conditioned, you're brainwashed, you're conditioned from childhood to have a certain way of being and liking and not liking and your belief system of what life should be like. And then you enter in the spiritual world. So you are becoming more conscious and aware an awakening, then you are getting brainwashed and conditioned based on a series of spiritual conditioning. So you begin to develop and replace your old bias, your old prejudice by a new bias, a new prejudice. So, and it's very, very clear. You can see in spiritual world, just like the mainstream world, that people form into groups. Cults are being formed. Um, let's say if you were with Osho, if you were with some different gurus, and let's say today you're after um, Anthony Robin, Robbins, you're after different kind of teachers, and what happens, let's say, you know, you're a Prambhava devotee, you're a Nityananda devotee, you're a Yogananda devotee, you're, you're into the oneness uh, university, whatever, uh, you're into shamanism, you're following some Peruvian shamans, you're following some Hawaiian uh, shamans, whatever is the story, you're a spiritual teacher here in Los Angeles, wherever it is. So you can always cross exam yourself that and to see and also look at the group and see where the group's at. And what happens is a prejudice is being developed that your guru, your teacher, your style of spirituality is superior to others, other ways. So whether you're a Tibetan monk, whether you are into Judaism, 
whether you're in Christianity, you're in Sufism, Islam, uh, those are the religions. And then you can look into the spiritual world and see, check, check cross-exam with yourself. See that you feel your teacher and your belief system is superior to others. And you can see it with people who become a vegan or vegetarian. Then there's this thing against people who eat meat um, or they're not vegan or they're not into yoga or whatever it is. Groups and type of mentalities being formed around that, that this style of practice is more superior to other styles of practice. So then you start to form and get conditioned to it, a conditioning, a bias, a prejudice is being developed. And right then and there, you're in a trap. You're back into the cycle of the matrix because what happens is that there is an I thought, me, I am separated from the whole and this is what I believe life or God existence should be according to my liking and my group. And my guru, my teacher, he should be as, or she should be a saint. So what we do is we put them up and then when they don't do things we like them to do according to our liking, we bring them down and we crucify them like how Christ apparently got crucified. So we take our teachers up there and then we crucify them later on because <clears throat> we like to believe that a spiritual teacher should be upholding certain moral, moral and spiritual values. And if they don't, then, then they're not spiritual. <clears throat> now, whatever is the group's moral values are, that's a different story. It could be about, okay, you can have sex, you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't smoke a cigarette, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol, blah, 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 blah. And if you do those things, then you're not spiritual, you're not awake, and I'm going to get rid of you and go to somebody else. I'm disappointed with you. So this Back to, I don't want to get sidetracked. This is another subject that I can talk to you about. If Hilda Evanstadt, she keeps a record of what I talk about. And you can remind me, Hilda, that I come to this subject because this is a very good subject. <clears throat> so, but back to oneness and back to fifth dimension. What's fifth dimension? Where is fifth dimension? And as I told you, if you have an idea that humanity is going to evolve to this place and we're going to move into a utopian type of lifestyle, <clears throat> and that's how you find liberation, then I have to say you're in, in deep trouble and you are up there for a big disappointment because that's not how it's being done. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying we can't go to a utopian type of a lifestyle, but that is not freedom. Okay, you're not free. Means that in the utter world, the world outside of yourself, you got it to be the way you want it to be. 